to might not completely understand where which things have to be applied okay so this example is not valid over here yes okay so basically what happens in in addition rule if if they are mutually exclusive then p of a or b is equal to p of a plus p of b uh rudra where i have done the typo okay so this is now let us uh, see one one this should be and i don't know the intersection symbol and okay p of a and b okay now let us take take right examples of it for example if you have to talk about the mutually exclusive events tell me if i throw one die on th on rolling a die what is the probability of getting two or three now tell me first of all we we can get either we can get two or we can get three okay so here this means we we are going to apply addition rule only okay we are going to apply addition rule only over here okay so now tell me uh, here what it is uh, they are are they mutually exclusive or non mutually exclusive p of a is getting a two and p of uh, b is getting three now since they are mutually exclusive they are mutually exclusive so we'll be having it p of a plus p of b clear yeah. so now p of a plus p of b is p of a is uh, 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 which is equal to 1 by 3 clear so this is how we have to detect where we are going to apply p of a plus b and where we have to reduce that where there are mutually exclusive events and mutually non ex non mutually exclusive events clear now let us take an example uh on rolling a die what is the probability what is the probability of getting factors of 2 or fact, uh, of getting multiples of 2 or multiples of 3 multiples of 2 or multiples of 3 okay if we just randomly do this we have the total sub uh, space subspaces a total subspace would be 2 3 4 and 6 okay so if we if we just go it uh, just friend just without formulas that is going to be 4 by 6 that is 2 by 3 okay 2 by 3 but if we have to do it with the formula if we have to do it with the formula so then what we have to do is our probability of a is probability of a is uh, multiple multiple of 2 okay multiple of 2 which is 2 4 6 1 by uh, i'm just writing 3 by 6 okay then probability of b is probability of multiple of 3 that is again 2 by 6 okay and now the probability of a intersection b that is probability of uh, e, probability of uh, multiple of 6 okay probability of multiple of 6 6 is only 1 okay by our formula p of a plus p of b minus p of a intersection b what it becomes 4 by 6 that is 2 by 3 okay that becomes 2 by 3 okay so where we have to apply first of all we need to know where we have to apply addition rule 
okay and in addition where we have to subtract this common portion and where we not okay so basically it is in mutually exclusive events a intersection b is zero so therefore it the formula becomes like this okay they are not different formulas but actually for mutually exclusive events a intersection b is zero probability of a intersection b is zero so therefore only two terms are remaining clear okay now tell me what is the probability of getting getting an ace or ace or or i don't know the heart come on quickly very good that would be 4 by 13 16 by 52 or 4 by 13 okay anyone having got any doubt or shall we proceed the answer is 4 by uh, 4 by 13 16 by 52 okay okay so next thing is let us suppose the example that i took earlier was what was the example i took earlier ha huh. getting a tail and tail and two on a die okay tail and two on a die so here it is there are two different things happening okay one means out of head or tail one outcome would be there and out of 1 to 6 two would be there okay so two two events are happening over here basically okay two events are happening over here basically in addition what it is either a single single would happen okay only one event out of these only one event out of these would happen okay but in and that is both of the events are happening two events are happening over here okay so where when more than one event is happening that comes under multiplication 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 rule okay that comes under multiplication rule okay so abhishek you need to check the answer 1 by 12 is not correct uh, oh, for this one okay okay fine for multiplication rule what we have we need to understand two things first we uh, will understand independent events okay independent event in independent event what it is see getting a tail and getting the two thus uh, are they dependent means if a tail will come is it have any does it have any dependence of two coming over here no so they are independent events okay in the case of independent events p a and b p a and b is equal to p of a into p of b okay which is equal to in this case getting a tail is 1 by 2 into 1 by 6 okay that forms 1 by 12 okay fine the next this that comes over here is dependent events okay dependent events okay independent events what we have is for example if i am having a bag having four red balls three green balls four red balls three green balls okay and i pick two balls ek i pick two balls now what is the probability of probability of getting both red what is the probability of getting both red so basically here are two events are happening okay two events are happening 
प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए ए इज फर्स्ट बॉल इज रेड फर्स्ट बॉल इज रेड प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी इज सेकेंड बॉल इज रेड ओके नाउ नाउ दे आर ओके टेल मी इज गेटिंग सेकेंड बॉल रेड डिपेंडेंट अपॉन ऑफ ऑन फर्स्ट बॉल बींग रेड द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग सेकेंड बॉल रेड Verdan, it depends. It depends upon what. Basically, what it is, probability of getting red ball is is uh, is four by seven, four by seven. Now see, probability of getting second ball red is going to depend upon. It there can be two possibilities. Okay, it can be either. Uh, means if in the first time if in the first time we choose we choose red ball then it would be 3 by 6 okay and in the in the first time if we choose green ball then it would be 4 by 6 so what is happening that the second ball choosing second ball red is depending upon if the first ball was red or green red or green hai na so what is this it is calculated as a conditional probability of P B given A, P B given A means B given. A. Okay. So dependent events are how we are going to calculate P A and B is P of A into P of B given A. That is three three by six three by six. Okay, so probability of uh, both ball red become four by seven into three by six. Four by seven into three by six. Clear? So basically, from today's class, the main get uh, takeaways are: if we, first we need to know if we have to apply addition rule or multiplication rule. Okay, so addition rule is okay. For example. If you have three three T-shirts and um, the question would become a little complex. Okay, and two shirts. Okay. What is the probability that you will wear a shirt? First of all, tell me. See, we will practice very easy questions so that we can make base for the difficult questions. Tell me, this is this is going to have addition problem or multiplication problem? Assuming that you are not uh, Sundar of Tarak Mehta called Tadishma, you wear either you wear T-shirt or you wear shirt. So, which first of all, what you have to apply? The addition rule or multiplication rule? Very good. We have to apply addition rule because either we can wear t-shirt or we can wear two-shirt. Okay. So here we are going to apply. First, we so we thought we think that it is a addition. We are going to apply addition rule. Okay. Next, are these two events mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive? How the Aditya and Dalvijay they are non-exclusive. They are mutually exclusive because if you wear if you wear t-shirt, then how it could be non? If you wear t-shirt, can you wear shirt? Either you can wear t-shirt or you can wear shirt. Okay, no problem. Okay, so they are non non-mutually exclusive. Okay, non. Mutually 
exclusive. Uh, okay, so probability of A is wearing a shirt, probability of B is wearing a t shirt. Okay, so it is three by nine and plus. 2 by 9, 3 by 9 plus 2 by 9. Okay. So, what simply is it we are going to do is P of A or B is going to be P of A plus P of B plus B of B. Okay. What is going to be P of A? That is 3 by 9. Okay. And what is P of B? 2 by 9. So, total 5 by 9. Okay. Now, tell me if it is. If you have three t shirts, and two shirts, two shirts, four trousers. Five shots. What is the probability? What is the probability? Sorry. Sorry, it is just a type over here. Formula uh, we have applied right, but it is a type over here. Thank you, Vazan. They are mutually exclusive. Thank you so much. So now tell me what is the probability of wearing shirt and trouser? Recording in progress. So see, first of all, we have to see wearing shirt and trouser. Okay, wearing shirt and trouser. So basically, it is the question of probability of A intersection B. Okay, probability of A intersection B. Okay, probability of A intersection B. Okay, so this is wearing shirt and trouser. Are they independent events or dependent events? Does wearing a shirt depends upon trouser? Assuming that we don't have any, we don't, we have zero fresh uh, dressing sense. So they are independent. Okay. They are independent. They are independent. Hence, P e of A intersection B is going to be P e of A into P of B. Okay. Now, let us find first of P of A. First of all, P of A would be 3 by, uh, sorry, 2 by 5. Okay. 2 by 5. Total options he, he was having were 5. Okay. And 2 by 5. Probability of B is 5 by 9. Fine. Everyone agrees? Sorry, sorry. Okay. 
Okay, so now what we have to do is just multiply them. Okay, four by nine, fine. So then we just have to multiply them. Eight by forty-five. Clear? Okay, in the next class, what we'll do, we'll see how to create a data frame. Okay, we'll see how to create the data frame. Data frame is basically a two dimensional data structure, means your data is stored in the form of rows and columns. The data is stored in the form of rows and columns. No, but then it can, can it be two by 14? Because if we see probability of A, If we see probability of A, probability of A is just wearing shirt. Okay, shirt for shirt means for wearing shirt. The possibility is either you will wear t-shirt or shirt. So your possibility is only that you can wear t-shirt or shirt. So from there, the shirt would be two by five. Got it? Very good. Okay. Okay, in the next class, we'll see how to create a data frame. Apart from data frame, let us see, let us suppose a data frame is like this. So basically data frame is your values are stored in the form of rows and columns. Okay. Your values are stored in the form of rows and columns. Okay. So from here, this is a data frame. Okay. Now from here, if you want, want to find the mean of this co column, okay. This contains the mean, the, this, con this column contains the marks. If you find, want to find the mean of this column, then there's a simple function on that. Okay, on that column dot mean. Okay, dot mean. It will give you the mean. Simple. What it is, how we are going to get data, data frame, we'll see in the next class. From the data frame, df marks is going to give you the column. Okay, going to give you this column. From this column, if you want to find the mean of this column, you can just write, need to write the function dot mean function. Okay. Similarly, for median, median function, mode, mode. Minimum, minimum, if you want to find minimum, maximum, okay. If you want to find the range, then the range, okay. What is the range? Maximum minus minimum only is the range. If you want to describe the data, okay, it includes how many values are there. Count includes how many values are there. There are four values. Mean, what is the mean of those values? What is the standard deviation of those values? Minimum value, your value at 25th percentile, your value at 50th percentile, your value at 75th percentile, and your maximum value. Okay, maximum value automatically means 100 percentile. Okay. So it can it is of the column marks and float data type. Okay. So now this is in the form of a dictionary. This is in the form of a dictionary. If you want to find any particular value, okay, for example, you want to find the minimum value from there. So you can just write. Uh, this thing, complete this thing, and similarly, the way the way we print the value corresponding to some key of the dictionary, we can just print it like this, minimum. Okay, it will give you the minimum value. So, float type over here is because of that, data type. Data type is float. Okay, the values are stored in the form of a float 64. Okay. And if you want to plot the histogram, so in histogram, what we have to do is, uh, that we'll see in the class of class of matplotlib. Okay, fine. So I'll just upload this in on GitHub. Mathematics.
Recording in progress. Okay. Download the zip. Zip file would be downloaded from in your downloads. You can unzip this file. Okay. You can unzip this file. For the Python project, we'll do it in some other class. Okay, then thank you everyone. Let's meet in the next class. Bye-bye, take care.